Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G. Cole, and welcome to Homegrown, where I get to share with you some good music while talking to some great people. Hello world, I hope you're feeling as good as I am. I want to big up all my homegrown listeners out there and welcome all the new listeners. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do, so we can keep you updated when new material is available. We will be posting new episodes bi-weekly. I want to thank everyone who has been listening and sharing. Please leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. Please check out the website also, homegrownwithgcole.com, to listen and for all things homegrown. The podcast is now available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and all your podcasts platforms. Also, we're very interactive. Please follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook at MyGCole. This is episode 28. Are you annoyed by the big tents that are so bulky you end up leaving them in a garage or the umbrella that you have to keep chasing down the beach? Well, no more. Ultimate Beach Shades is a one-of-a-kind product. It's like a tent that is not a tent. You can get it in plain, your favorite color, or you can get your flag on it and rep your country. And here's another thing. If you're a business owner, you can advertise on it. You now have a portable advertising billboard wherever you go. You're at your kid's soccer game, you're advertising. You're at the beach, you're advertising. You're tailgating, you're advertising. If you're a tailgater, you can get the optional rear hardware package. Go to ultimatebeachades.com or call them at 786-447-3377. Tell them G. Cole sent you. It's 786-447-3377. Ultimatebeachades.com. This is genius. I Ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking with a corporate image consultant, owner and co-designer of Broadtail Designs, talking about an inspiration to many and just overall a fun person to talk to, Miss Dania Beckford. Dania, welcome. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I I'm so happy to be cool. on your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank. You. First of all, I'm not mispronouncing your name, am I? It is Dania. Ah, got it. I nailed it. I nailed it. I nailed it. A <laughs> yes, pretty name, did. by the way, so I'm glad I nailed it. 
<laughs> <laughs> Let me start by saying I'm, I, I don't know anything about fashion. Jeans, T-shirt, <laughs> pull it on. You know what I mean? Whatever. Sometimes my daughter look at me like, this dude is tripping right now. But <laughs> I am It's so all in the inspired. fashion. It's all in the fashion. It goes, right? If it, if it, you don't yeah. have to match me. You know, it's what's in my head. Exactly. See? I can know a person's personality by looking at what they have on. Because usually that's how persons show who they are by what they're wearing. See? See? That means I'm a <laughs> thinker. Based on what I wear, that means I'm a thinker. So. <laughs> well, I'll have to see. You know, I have to like pre a fair little while and say, yeah, maybe I'm that. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> now, ironically, the last episode of the podcast was on launching your business and establishing your brand. Talk mm-hmm. to me about Broadtail. How, first of all, how did you come up with the name and how has the journey itself been, you know, stamping the brand across the Jamaican and international fashion scene? I'm talking about Broadtail. <laughs> okay. Well, the Broadtail journey is an exciting one so far because it's two and a half years, almost three years, and so many things have happened in that period of time. First of all, the reason why my business came about is not because I ever planned to be a fashion designer. Well, I always loved clothes and stuff, mm-hmm. but I was never planning to be a fashion designer. It really happened because I couldn't find any swimsuits that could fit me because I'm a full-figured woman. I'm plus size, I'm fat, whatever you want to call it, I'm <laughs> that. And I could not find any Curvy. swimsuits. I'm from Discovery Bay. I'm curvy. You know, we have a lot. We're thick. You know, we have every three months we change the name, but I'm that woman. Um, and I'm from Discovery Bay, St. Anne. And if you know Discovery Bay, we have the famed Puerto Seco Beach. Mm-hmm. Everybody loves it. So I'm always going to the beach. And as I grew up, I realized that I couldn't find swimsuits that were appealing to me as a teenager, as a young woman. And, and of course, when I became an adult, they were all so frumpy. And I started to wear my mother's swimsuit from the 70s because the 70s had some wicked cuts. They looked good. That high right. cut that we're wearing now, yeah, that's from the 70s. My. So I was wearing her swimsuits. And I'm like, no, why I can't go into any store? and find anything to fit me that looked like my age, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know what? I can do a little bit of sketching. Man, I know boss at the drawing thing, but I can. So I would sketch out little things that I'd want to wear and I find a one dressmaker that could make it for me. And she made it. And in this age of Facebook and Instagram, you know, social media and all digital media, I posted it on Facebook and somebody was like, where you get that? And I'm like, what do you mean? I mean, I make somebody make it for me. I design it and thing, chose the fabric. And they were like, oh, so could you make it for me? And I'm like, could you pay for it? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, okay. (laughs) And so that's basically how the business started. Wow. When it comes to the name now, Broadtail, I mean, if in a Jamaica, when you're the road I walk, Easy. man call you all type of things. <laughs> then I say, you're round like English pawn. What a girl, Broadie. You know? And then I say, you're my broad for true zone. And then I really love the peacock and you know how him tails stay. I'm like, hmm, Broadtail, maybe that can work. Yeah, so there that goes. What? Broadtail. <laughs> <laughs> I love because, it. Because, you know, your tail broad, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's just it. It really wasn't a lot of brain work. Wow. <laughs> What's amazing is this. I don't think you need social media. I think if you walked out the street and told the people, just tell them what you just told me a while ago, sold. <laughs> I hate that. You have people who are not even weigh 100 pounds and rock the broad tail. What's going on it's here? True, no, watch it's nothing. true. So we have to call them broad tail, broad tail petite or we call them tiny tails because all tails matter. Cool, no man. I love it. <laughs> I love it. You better copyright that here. <laughs> <laughs> I should, right? You like can't it. use it. All <laughs> <Joking>. tails matter. <laughs> all tails matter. <laughs> wow. Boy, they say necessity is the mother of invention, I guess. Yes, it really is. It really is. Because um, I, when I was doing my master's uh, the past two years, I did most of the study because it was an integrated marketing communication. So I just used the time doing my master's to do a lot of research in my own business mm-hmm. because my business was new. And so I did a lot of interviews with full-figured women based on courses I was doing on in marketing. And I found that a lot of women had the same problems that I was having. We couldn't find, well, we couldn't find clothes, period. But right. they couldn't find swimsuits that they'd feel sexy in. In, but yet it still covered the things that they wanted to cover and highlighted the things that they wanted to highlight. So my business, Rautel Design, it, it brings that balance to it. We show a little sexy, but we still keep you covered and firm and make you looking nice. I love it. I love it. I love it. And it's, it's, it's pretty much women's clothing, right? It is women's clothing. I, clothing, sorry. I don't know what I would do with men who are broad tail. I'm not sure as yet. 
Because I don't even know if I should call him that. Yeah, yeah, you can. That, can that, that, that'll yeah, cause a lot of so. problems, you know? Yeah, uh-huh. It's going to cause a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it, it, it's fully female right now. And, I mean, as you know, we've expanded our market. We're into carnival now. Um, we've done two years with Jamaica International, which is a carnival band in Jamaica. I mm-hmm. must say the trend is carnival band. Let me just drop that in. Wow. Um, but um, <laughs> we have a fully plus-size section in Jamaica, the broad tail section, and it has done so well especially this year a lot of our clients are from the region and also from North America and we are just so happy at the stories that we hear from our masqueraders who tell us that oh my god I'm in a suit that really fits well it covers all the things that I want to cover it makes me sexy at the same time I don't have to be drawing down and pulling down things on carnival day everything works and that's really what we want to hear from our clients because in our mind we're not really segmenting the market per se in terms of oh plus size women are better than average size women no it's not about that it's really about feeling confident in whatever you have on because we believe that the confident ladies they're the most beautiful trust me trust me that confidence thing and it has nothing to do with size it has nothing confidence a lot of times it's coming from within it's coming from within it really is it really is because you know as women we have we we, we treat ourselves we judge ourselves so harsh as women you know True. and whether it is you're a small woman a medium-sized woman or a full-figured woman we all have our issues with ourselves but when it comes to confidence it's really something from within but let me tell you something when you put on a, something that fits you properly mm-hmm. uh, when you never did have the confidence that from within it just start come out they ain't just full attitude people say hi like, <laughs> you just tooting whatever negro <laughs> 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 I love it. I love it. I love it. Let me t- first of all, who does your marketing? Is it you? I do. I can tell. Because communications is my base. So I did PR and co- I did media and communication specializing in PR and cultural studies at UE for my degree. And my master's was in integrated marketing communication. So I do co-designing with Debbie Ann Newell, who is a friend of mine. I call her the design doctor because she's actually a medical doctor by profession. Wow. But I do all the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, me love it, me yeah. love it. First of all, you, you got your money's worth out of that course, man. I tell you the truth. I kid <laughs> you, you not. Right now, I got, I got all these things written down because I was researching and I said, I have all these questions for you. And you just answered them <laughs> all. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn, I love it. I wish Thank every you. interview could be like this. I love it. I love <laughs> Thank it. Thank you I so love much. It. Now let's 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 take a step back a bit. Talk to me mm-hmm. about first of all, you say you're from this cover I'm from Ochina, so I'm a sent on people. Yeah. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Lie. Garden Trust first me. people, we're nice, you know. I don't we're nice. Tell them, we the sweetest. <laughs> we the sweetest. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Buckfield, I did my Ochris primary, Fern Court. Yeah, yeah man, all them thing there. Then I went on nice. to Prospect College. I went to St. Hilda's. See it there? Yeah, see that? I don't like to send you this. Big up around. my St. Hilda's P. Of course, she did like us. We were the best. Yeah, I ain't gonna front. You were. You were. You were. You were. My York Castle was coming up there, but there wasn't. There wasn't no St. Yeah, Hilda's. Yeah, they were second. Boy. I'm sorry, my York Castle peeps. I love you too. But St. Hilda's Dice on high school for girls. True, mm-hmm. true. I think it's a color of the uniform. You know? I don't know. What, what color is that, by the way? Uh, um, It's lavender. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> I know it's not pink. Uh, you know, guys, we don't yeah. know no colors now. You see that pink, red, really yellow, no blue, or black. So, yeah. If I'm a primary color, we don't know it. We don't know it. No, sir. And even that, no push it either, though. Because, you know. <laughs> now, talk to me about Dania growing up. From, from, from going from Dania Beckford to mm-hmm. Dania Beckford, owner and co designer of Broad Tales. That the childhood growing up. Well, you know, growing up in Discover Bay, Discover Bay is a very laid back town, you know. Mm-hmm. We have our beaches, it's it's a lot of it's it's either tourism or bauxite. That's where I'm from, you know. Right. So it's very it was a very simple living. I'm from Hopel Park, which is a residential area. My parents, they're Jehovah's Witnesses, so I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. So yes, I'd be calling on you? your door. I'd be calling I'll be I'll be I'll be at your door calling. You hear the dog in the background? Yeah. Yeah. That means it's legit. <laughs> it's legit. <laughs> I'll be you know calling at your door to ask you if you want to hear about the word of Jehovah. So that's how I grew up, which is one of the reasons that I think I'm so confident. You know, because from a very early age, I was reading in front of whole audiences. I was visiting people's homes and talking about the Bible. So I think that's where I got my actual confidence from. My wow. father, he was a police officer, and my mother, she was a, a, a house wife but she also had her catering business at home so maybe that's why I'm an entrepreneur who knows but um, one very important thing that I was even saying to somebody 
the other day is that one thing that I'm very grateful for my parents for is that even if I was going to get beaten after I said something, they always gave me the opportunity to speak, you know? Right. And I think that's a very important thing for women, young girls growing up, that you always know that True. you have the opportunity to say what you want to say, even if there's going to be repercussions after, but you don't keep it all in, you know? I think it builds the confidence of young girls. And that's how I grew up. I went to St. Hilda's, and they, as I said to you before, and then I always knew that I wanted to do something in media. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be radio, but upon going to UE and learning about public relations and marketing, I chose to go that route in right. media. And so I ended up doing my degree, as I told you, in media and communication and in my master's in, in integrated marketing communications. And, you know, as I said to you, I always wanted to own a business. I, I've been telling my mother, she teases me all the time because she said, <laughs> me can't believe that you have your own business because you always say you want to own something. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't know it would be fashion designing either, but I always wanted to own something for myself, you know, because I, I think it. that as aspiring um, uh, well-influenced people in society. Mm. We have to try to own a little piece of Jamaica, you know? Of and, and and broad tail for me is very cultural because if you, you are from Jamaica and all the people who come to Jamaica, you know, we have a lot of full-figured women here. Mm-hmm. And, and based on the fact that our island has so many beautiful beaches, having a swimsuit is a part of our culture. So to me, broad tail designs is a lot about owning a little piece of my Jamaica. I love it. I love it. And you're so, 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 so right. Jamaica, one of the few places where sometimes a skinny girl can't find a man. But I just they said see. the thing now. I'm telling you. Because right now you have to roll like English phone. You know what I mean? I love it. I love it. I love it. Funny enough, you mentioned even being a Jehovah's Witness. As I talk to you, and I love talking to people who I can relate to because it's it's vivid depictions. And by the way, do not give up on the whole radio thing. I think you do excellent at it. So and You think so? I absolutely think you would. But definitely, as I hear it, Jehovah Witness, I went to Kingdom Hall once or twice. You know, it was for ulterior motives, but I did go. You know <laughs> what I mean? for a girl, huh? I, what? Because I don't know why. Kingdom Hall always had the most beautiful girls. We have the well-behaved ladies. That's what we had there. Oh, uh, seen. Well, okay. <laughs> there were a couple of them that are... Uh, <laughs> That, uh, yeah, you're yeah. gonna keep that by yourself. You're I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna hold that in. Yourself. I'm gonna hold that <laughs> you in. Hold that in. I'm gonna hold that in. But I had to break out though, cause I, I just had a feeling. You know, sometimes you just feel like the Almighty. I look behind the funny. So <laughs> I had to, I had to, I had to bail out of that situation. But yeah, I was young and bold, and I said, I'm gonna go to Kingdom Hall, cause she kind of fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, Did yeah. you like it? I liked her. Oh, okay. Yeah. As far All as right. yeah, it was, I need, I, I need, I need some energy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I need energy, but that's what yeah. the team <laughs> Now, there are fashion designers who are at it for years trying to get that break. Mm-hmm. And, and when I say fashion, the arts, you know, all that stuff. Um, you mentioned your background is not in fashion, not in the arts at all. No. Um, what's your inspiration um, outside of the fact that you, you mentioned the necessity for it, but now that the brand's established, and I keep going brand, 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 mm-hmm. brand, because what I, I see, the way how you nail your brand is, to me, is exquisite. A lot of people, I had, I had that conversation with some people, and I realized that some people are trying to set up businesses and haven't set up a brand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're putting the cart before the horse, and they're trying right. to sell something that nobody knows about. Um, as you go uh, right now that the business is established, you know, you're not selling the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. What inspires you? I know you're from Discovery Bay. You're probably living in a city now where things are moving a little faster paced up and down. It's a little bit noisier. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're right. You're completely right. (laughs) You know what I mean? Because I'm in Kingston now. Um, well, you know what? I had the opportunity of, uh, hearing Richard Branson speak in Jamaica last year. And he said something that has stayed with me. He said that if your business is not solving a problem, then your business is having a problem. And um, I think that the problem that my business continues to solve for women is confidence. I would tell people all the time. So the output is a swimsuit and a cover up or a resort wear, but what we're really selling is confidence. And I think that that's why the brand resonates so much with the market so far, because brands are in the minds of people. And a lot of, a lot of women have been struggling with self-esteem issues. They've been struggling with confidence issues. They've been struggling with themselves. And, you know, maybe that's because of the type of world that we grew up in, whether because we say it's patriarchal or whether because we say that, you know, women have their place in society traditionally, but, but women want that outlet to let everyone, 
everybody know, especially themselves, that I'm a confident woman and I, I, I can be who I want to be. And that's what brown tail really does for you because when you put on that swimsuit and you see how great it fits you and how you feel in a swimsuit. For instance, I've had one client who her husband called me and told me that this is the best she he has ever seen his woman look at the beach. Wow. And I was just like, are you serious? And he was like, yes, the man called me, not even wow. her. He called me to show you how confident she was. And I'm sure she has looked just as good in other suits. But when you feel good, that's mm-hmm. the difference. And that's really what we sell. And I think that's what it, why it resonates. I love it. So with this newfound confidence, she left him yet? No. No? Still going she love him more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really think that's why. And I mean, we really want to expand. I mean, we want to get into active wear because that's another reason. A lot of times when you're at the gym, it's it's processed. People are at the gym trying to lose weight. Mm -hmm. And when you look at all the average sized women or the smaller women, they're in some cutesy suits and they're Mm -hmm. looking in the mirror when they're exercising. And you're just like, you know, one big T-shirt and one average tight though. And we want the women who are exercising to make themselves healthier, whether even if you want to be thin, it's not a problem. But you also want to feel feel confident in what you're doing and so that's a market that we're trying to definitely get into pretty soon i really love it i really love it again copyright them phrases because you said something earlier that sticks with me you're selling confidence yeah we're selling confidence i love it ladies and gentlemen we're talking to dana beckford here we got a lot more coming your way keep it moving keep it grooving it is homegrown Reflects I know I'd really love to take you And I'm sure that you would really like it there I see it still so clearly through my window There's a joy so sweet I taste it in the air Boom, boom, yeah And this place is in my memory It's a place our kids will never know Take me back to the old day When days used to nice People were rocking away Back to morning light Back to the old days Those days I adore Lovers would hold on tight On the dance floor Back to the old days Yes, yes, yes. And that one is yours truly. G. Cole and the Raps and Kush Band featuring J. Will. That song is called Back to the Old Days from the album Ultra Race. We heard from Ioctian earlier with Love You Like I Do. You know, that's probably what I was missing in that video, Dania, is some broad tail lace. <laughs> <laughs> but next time, next time we're going to get it going. We're going to yes, get it going. Yes, next time. We'll hook you up. Trust me, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> now, the world of fashion, from what I understand, can be quite competitive, right? 
Yes, I can. Mm-hmm. Outside of the standard stuff that everybody does, what are some things that you guys are doing that you know to make sure that you set yourself apart from the competition? And I guess I should ask: well, Is there any competition? There are there are lots of competition because there there are quite a lot of designers that are doing swimsuits in Jamaica and even in the carnival world. If you look at all the band launches right now, everybody has a full figure option. Two years ago, they didn't have a full figure option when we started to do it. But competition is good, you know, because it really pushes you. It really True. pushes you to be a very best self when you have other persons there, and it also measures how great you're doing in the market. Because if it is that with all this competition people are still choosing your brand and you know that it's really resonating. So we we look at the trends, we see what's happening, but we don't mind the competition at all. There's a piece of the market for everybody. I'm not even going to say, oh, I, 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 I'm the first start. No, I'm not the first that's doing plus size, maybe plus size swimsuits in Jamaica, right. but I'm not the first. And there's no new idea anywhere. There really isn't a new idea because True. if you check back in history, there would have been somebody who had even a piece of that idea before. So we really love competition. But just by nature of the fact that we are focused on the plus size market it makes us different because it one of the things when I did my first media interview here somebody it was it was with the observer and they posted it on their website and somebody posted underneath it that plus size women should not be wearing these styles and I mean there was there was a big furor because other people started to defend it to say, why not? They're women too. They can be sexy too. It's not like anything is dropping out or anything like that. So it's still a mindset that we're trying to change. And so we're not trying to force many things. We are just continuing to empower women, you know? So right. we're, we're, we're not trying to really get out of the box to say, oh my God, we're pushing the envelope. We're already pushing the envelope by giving women confidence. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I mean, the manga people then calm themselves, you know, because guess what? <laughs> You know, it, I don't, for some reason, there's this misconception that, you know, skinny is healthy. And as a matter of fact, for the last couple of years, most of the people I know that have been dropping out are skinny people, yeah. you know, because yeah. it masks the lack of health, too. Um, yes, it does. You know, it's a crazy And you know thing. what to do? You know what to um, Many other women who are even average size or small, they also have some issues with their bodies as well. So it, it's, it's universal. It's not just full figured. True, true. Sometimes I see a lady walking on there, and I mean, I don't want to buy her a drink. I'm going to buy her a sandwich. I'm like, listen, you need to eat this. <laughs> <laughs> you sound a little thick, but it's all good. It's all good. Now, your work itself speaks for itself. The work speaks for itself. But one of the main reasons I was really intrigued to speak with you is because the concept more than anything, the concept of broad tail, your mm-hmm. entrepreneurship your fierceness, your I am woman, hear me roar. I just love it. Your I'm going to be fly while I'm doing it, all that stuff. And I find it so inspiring. And I know Thank kids, you. you're welcome, um, especially little girls. My, I have a daughter. She's about to be 18. But I always think to myself, <laughs> little girls must be so inspired by this. Now, yeah. what do you think? Um, well, that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it, because a lot of my clients now who are adults, they told me about when they were smaller how people would tease them because they're fat or they didn't want to do the same things that average size girls were doing because they thought that they weren't pretty or they weren't sexy or Mm -hmm. they just felt less than and I think that that's because of a narrative that society was promoting um, at the time and even now and so um, one of the things that I'm doing I just not not even separate from broad tail but just as a woman who is into empowering other women is I'm going into the schools and I'm talking to young girls about protocol, about carrying your body well, about being your very best self. As a matter of fact, I'm supposed to visit a primary school on Wednesday for their girls' day wow. to talk about what I do as an entrepreneur and also how they should be or how they should think as 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 young girls. Because don't try what I what I say to them is don't try to fit into the box of of, of anything that anybody gives to you. You know, mm-hmm. try to think outside of the box. Think independently for yourself. Question things that you hear about. Question things. That that you see and, and come up with your own conclusions about them and about yourself, you know, because right. what, what you mean to yourself is more important than what anybody would ever say about you. And once you're secure in that, then there is nothing that anybody can tell you that could make you feel less about yourself. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. Little girls out there, young women, grown women, because truth be told, you're a young lady yourself. You're inspiring a lot of women that are way older than you. Thank you. You know, it's just the whole concept. You're very welcome. The whole concept of of, 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 of broad tail. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. But primarily what I do love is you couldn't have chosen 
a better person to be the spokesperson for broad tail <laughs> than yourself. Um, I yeah, kid you I, not. I believe that because I went through all the experiences that, well, I can tell you from my point of view, it's not like I'm putting on anything. I'm not adding on to the story or subtracting mm-hmm. or trying to make it seem good. These are things that I went through. I mean, I never felt like I never had the self-esteem issue because I never thought that I was less than anybody else. But there were persons who tried to make me feel that. And I was just like, no, what are you talking about? But I'm the queen, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There's nothing to me that is refreshing. Like when somebody tries to put somebody down and realize that wrong person, new target. Yeah, that people have tried so many times. Why are you wearing that? Why are you always wearing a swimsuit? Why are you always pretending like you're hot? I'm not pretending. I actually think so. And I don't, I don't need you to think so. I just need to think so. And I do, you know, so that's really it. Kill out as a level. I like it. <laughs> you really would, wouldn't you? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Ladies, you definitely... And, and the one thing I'll say is this. The w- women, you you guys run the world. I ain't going to front. Um, we, do. we do what we do because of you. And if, if it yeah. wasn't for women, we'd be living in boxes. We'd be walking the streets. Would nobody be driving cars and whatever the case may be. <laughs> we it really would, true. right? Absolutely. So um, hopefully everybody's using the power for good. You know what I mean? If you're with a man that's doing ill deeds and whatever, 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 implore him not to do so or you might have to bounce. You know, utilize that power for good. But, you know, I just love the message that you're sending. Thank I you. I really, really love it. And I think it's something that I say ladies just because over the years, and like you mentioned, the whole patriarchal thing and the misogynistic mm-hmm. society we live in, a lot of ladies have been trampled upon. Men too. Right. But right, but, yeah, me you know, too. Them, for them cars can't fight tomorrow. We're talking about mm-hmm. the ladies right now. Yeah, today. Today's for the women. Today's for the women. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> now, while you are so busy being an inspiration to so many, who, not what, but who inspires you? Who's Dania's muse? Oh my God, Michelle Obama. I love her so much. Wow. Everybody will tell you. Everybody will tell you that I am such a big fan of Michelle Obama because she her story is also very real. You know, mm-hmm. she came from Chicago. It wasn't any great type of living before. She's very smart. She went to the best schools and she just pushed, you understand? And even though she was married to the president, she was not popular because of the president. She was not inspirational because of the president. And her life's work is to make other young girls and females empowered and I really really like that in my own country when I was in Discovery Bay growing up I I really used to admire um, Paula and Porta and I got the opportunity to meet her and she even taught me some voice and voice and speech in a class and you know I got mm-hmm. all the things that I wanted to get from a woman like her and and she has been one of my muse uh, when I was growing up but now it's just Michelle Obama as a matter of fact I have my vision board and I have a picture picture of Michelle Obama on the board and I'm like you know what one day I'm gonna collaborate with this woman to do something very very empowering. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> Speak it into being. Put it in the air. Yes, I'm it's putting it over there. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I had um, Marsha Griffiths is one of the persons I've loved and adored for years, and mm-hmm. one of my favorites. I have a I have a, a, a vinyl a LP that I got from my father from her way back classic album, and I kept saying to myself, one of these days I want to interview Marcia. One of these days I need her to autograph my um my my, my record. Right. And last night it happened. So, oh my God, I'm so happy for you. Trust me. I, I'm, I'm walking around here floating on cloud nine right now. You'd swear. So trust me. And you're I know so how right. that feels. I oh, definitely yeah. know how that feels. Oh, yeah. And as far as the whole Michelle and stuff, I, the funny thing is I've had this conversation. I think right now, if every, if they stepped away and just went and created two brand new Instagram pages, Michelle <laughs> and Barack, she would get so much more like, so much more yeah, activity sure followers would. than he would. <laughs> Yeah, I like Obama, but she really would. <laughs> she rocks, man. And that's the, when you're looking for a wife, that's what you want. You want somebody that makes you look good. It ain't about my trophy on my arm. Yeah, you, really you know, do. you want to be there every time she step out. You're on your man. Go to the road, cause mother, go see me too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love definitely, it. I love it. I love definitely. It. Now, ideas are always floating around in our heads. Um, it's 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 like the picture that comes with the frame. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What words of advice can you give to those people pondering that? their ideas, but they're dragging their feet in bringing those ideas to life. Um, This one is very easy for me. Mm -hmm. You will not have the perfect situation that you want to bring your idea 
to fruition, but work with what you have currently and just start doing it. One day, if you if you if you start tomorrow, you lost today, and if you start the day after tomorrow, you lost tomorrow. So just start right now. Anything small steps is what you need to do in order to achieve something big. The easiest way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. So just start today. What that tastes like, Doja? I don't really know. (laughs) But an elephant big. (laughs) So if you really want to eat it, it's not really in chunks. One bite at a time. A little piece at a time. And some 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 walkers with jerk seasoning. And it shall happen. I feel it. Yeah. I feel it. But I'm so serious. Progress is progress, no matter how small it is. So just start right now. Don't drag your foot. Just, Just start right now. I love it. And I love the way you put it. Because a lot of times people search for information and... um. It's not that they're searching in the wrong places. I think it's in the wrong format. A lot of times people create these self-help books and all these how to, how to motivate yourself stories and whatever the case may be, some big, thick, brown book, whatever. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and the verbiage, the vernacular is just not prehensile. You know, you, you, it's not palatable. You, know, you can't soak that in. You know? yeah. and, for the, and, and for the most part, to the people who are writing it, the people who are telling you about it and so forth, they're not necessarily real. You never heard this about this person except from this book you don't know their reality they don't look like you they don't come from where you're coming from so there's a certain level of uh, uh what i would say is animation to it it ain't really real you know what i mean it's, yeah it's, it's, let it's, me share something mm-hmm. really quick with you when i did my first tv interview on tvj um i didn't even have a facebook page as yet and they were like so what's your facebook page and i was just like it's broad tail fit kinis so just Go on to Facebook and type in Broadtail Fit Kinis. And when the interview over me, hurry up and make a Facebook page. Quick, 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 quick. Because I was like, oh my God, I didn't have a Facebook page. But you see what I'm saying? I actually put yep. something out there so that when I get off, I could have made a page and people could have still gotten. Well, the fact that you came up with that so. right on the and spot. It filters- <laughs> <laughs> and the, the thing is, though, it, it filters into my point that everything will never be perfect, but just work with what you have, think on your feet. And sometimes, you know, Richard Branson actually said this one. Can you tell I like him too? Mm-hmm. He said that if somebody offers you an opportunity and you don't actually know how to do it, say yes and figure it out later. But that. you never, ever say no to an opportunity. I love that. I love that. I love that. And guess what? You're a fan of Richard Brands. And guess what? Always be a fan of the successful ones. It's amazing the, the, the people we choose to emulate nowadays. I've seen people. I tell people all the time, if you're trying to get on your fitness and your regiment and everything, and you come to me, fix it, f- 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 you, you're dumb as rocks. So it's a wrong person. <laughs> find the person who's good at it and take your inspiration where you can. I love it. Um, yep. there's a myth and I keep harping on it because a lot of people have good ideas and I've been talking to people, they're tuning in, they listen and so forth. So I want them to get it. But there's a myth out there that you shouldn't start a business while having a full-time job. I completely disagree with that. What's your take on it? I have a full-time job. Oh, really? Outside of, outside of. Yes, Bratia? I'm the director of entertainment in the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment and Sports. Mud. That's a mouthful. Say that one more time. <laughs> I'm the director of entertainment in the Ministry of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sports. That the your badge? The ID? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do have a full-time job. Is it challenging? Yes, it is. But you need to... If All right. So in Jamaica, it's not very popular for you to have a full-time job and for you to be an entrepreneur it's not really a model that we're into yet but Mm -hmm. the model has worked in a lot of other places there is a gentleman he's on he has this book i can't remember his name right now but it's called the 10 percent entrepreneur so your listeners can actually go and check it out the 10 percent entrepreneur and it really is what i'm doing it is being in a full-time job while having while being an entrepreneur as well and i mean oftentimes uh, persons become full-time entrepreneurs after a while but you have to do what you have to do there are some entrepreneurs who may Make it seem like, oh, if you're not a full-time entrepreneur, not a real entrepreneur, it's a myth. Right. As long as you can balance the time, respect both things, your employer, as well as the time you need to make your dreams come true, then you can do it. Ultimately, your passion will go towards whichever one you really want to do. Right. But yeah, it can be done. I hear it all the time. I love it. I love it. I hear it all the time. And, and I was talking to somebody who was telling me pretty much that, you know, I want to do this. I want to do this. So I'm going to, I'm probably going to quit my full-time job. So my question was, how are you going to fund this build business? It got mm-hmm. real quiet, real fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Real quiet. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it, and, and again, even the whole concept, you know, some people, uh, wanna, they, I think people misappropriate and misuse the whole entrepreneurial term. Um, you know, I want to do this. A lot of people say, I want to be entrepreneurs. And a reason what, what they're, what they're loosely saying is I don't want a job. 
Exactly. You know, and exactly the pipe because. Dream. For Broadtail, I have an operations manager, it's Tenny Gale, I'm the managing director, so I still oversee everything. I co-design, I have another designer who is Debbie, as I said to you before. So it's not like I'm doing everything. Part mm -hmm. of having a business is delegating. You cannot do everything. I have my finance person. So it's, it's a business. It has to have other people. But the first set of fabric that I brought for, for, for Broadtail, it was my salary from my full-time job that bought that. See that. I would not have had the money to buy the fabric. To See, pay the man. person who was making it. That is true. That is true. Right. And, and investors ain't easy to find. Exactly. Yeah. And I didn't want to take a loan. I mean, we've gotten grants from the Development Bank of Jamaica. And, you know, grants you don't have to pay back. But I didn't want to take a loan right. in that instance when I started the business. So it was really my salary that I was working from. A little bit after I had a friend who became an angel investor. But it was my salary that made my dream come true. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it right here. All right, she's doing it. She's doing it well. And I'm telling you, these are the words that you need to hear because a lot of people, they want to do it. They don't want to do it well and they don't want to do it the right way. So I <laughs> love it. I love it. I love it. One more tune coming your way. Keep it moving. Keep it grooving. It is homegrown. Ooh, baby. No. Because everything is nothing. If I ain't got you, and everything is nothing. Yeah. If I ain't got you, and if I ain't got you, ain't got you, I ain't got nothing. If I ain't got you, ain't got you, I ain't got nothing. Be tears in your heaven, then it rains. Yes, yes, yes. And that one is Ikea with the song Ain't Got You on the True Emotions Rhythm. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Dania. Uh, Dania had to go, but I really, really, really am so appreciative of her um, giving us some of her time. And uh, thanks again for all the people who you're inspiring by not just your works, but by your words and your actions. So um, on behalf of the Homegrown team here, I really, really, really appreciate it. And before we wrap up, I... I was really, as I did my research, blown away by your passion, your love, your appreciation for Miss Louise Bennett, um, one of our national, you know, treasures, rest in peace. And um, it's it's just culture and a cultural phenomenon um, in, in Jamaican theater, theater history, um, Miss Louise Bennett. And uh, Dania did her rendition of <laughs> Miss Mary Dryfoot Boy, one, one of the pieces by Louise Bennett. So before we got out of here, just wanted to go ahead and share that with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Dania Beckford, keep it moving, keep it grooving. It is homegrown. Mary Dryfoot Boy by Louise Bennett. Oh, we're on with Miss Mary Dryfoot Boy. Them girl have him for mock. Oh, when me meet him tomorrow night, them boy give me a shock. 
Me tell him, say, auntie and him cousin, them saying, how did And I ask so him getting on. Him say, oh, jolly, jolly. Me start to feel so sorry for the poor bad lucky soul. Me think him come a foreign land, come catch foreign bad coal. Me think he have a bad sore throat. But as in chat chat go on, me find out say it's foreign to one the boy was a put on. Come notice the same answer to all me say was, actually, what? Oh dear. And all them sitting there. Me give a joke, the girl them laugh. Hear the boy now? Ha ha, I'm sure you got that ballet dash out of the cinema. Same time, me lost my temper, me say, boy, clear out. I don't contract to me with no hot potato in your mouth. Him say, ha ha, silly, I don't think I understand you actually. Me say, you understand me, ah? Now you and him cut your scope, where you used to visit Nana Kitchen and a Gillan for Congo soap. I know all you can say is actually, why? But top, warm to the sweet Jamaican joke you used to pop. Him get vexed, walk out, head in at the ear, the girl them ball after him, not going, what? Oh dear! <laughs> and from that night till today, ma, them girl have him fi mock. Miss Mary Dry Foot Boy can't get over the shock. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Miss Lou would definitely be proud of that one. And uh, on behalf of all the homegrown listeners out there and myself, I want to go ahead and thank Miss Dana Beckford for taking time out to talk to us today. I really, really, really appreciate it. I'll also go ahead and put all the information for Broadtail Designs in the show notes so you can keep up with her and reach out to her. All right. Anyways, there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. It has indeed been a pleasure. Please be sure to subscribe to the podcast, Homegrown with G. Cole, available now on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and all your podcast platforms. Also, please check out the website, homegrownwithgcole.com, to listen in for all things homegrown. Remember, be safe, be kind, and be good to each other. My name is G. Cole, and this is Homegrown. Nakikinika sa musica, Homegrown with G. Cole. Estás escuchando Homegrown con G. Cole. Nin sien zai zheng zai shou ting de shi, Homegrown with G. Cole. You're listening to Homegrown with G. Cole. Remember, all the music played here on the podcast Homegrown with G. Cole is available on iTunes, Spotify, and all your digital retailers. Please support the artists.